However, genetic engineering has not been universally welcomed. There is a small but vocal group of people, primarily in Europe, who are opposed to the use of genetically modified crops. Genetically engineered food is not healthy. And all of us are saying, we want chemical-free food from farmers that we trust, food that we can afford. I think that if there's any risk involved whatsoever with the food we eat, we shouldn't take that risk. But how different is genetic engineering from what we've been doing already? Scientists claim that it is essentially a more accurate version of traditional plant breeding, and therefore genetic engineering is, if anything, safer than what went before. Genetic engineering allows you to work in a much more precise way with single individual genes. So in that regard, it's much more pure and much more controlled, and perhaps even more safe. But critics also argue that modern genetic engineering is more unnatural than traditional plant breeding because scientists can now transfer genes between very different species. However, scientists point out that even species which seem totally unrelated, such as trees and humans, are not as different as they seem, and in fact, share many genes. And what do you say to the critics who contend that there's something unnatural about transferring a gene from one species to another species? Well, I would say that there's nothing really to worry about. I share a lot of genes in common with this bamboo. I mean, we have, ancest our ancestors were linked at one time, and so we now share the same types of cells, the same types of structures in the, same, in the cells, and we share DNA. So in many ways, this plant and I are not very different. To investigate further, I decided to look at a gene database at my laboratory in UCLA. So you can find a gene in a plant that's similar to what we have in human cells? Uh, yes. In fact, uh, I could show you how similar we are. This is the human, and this is the plant. It's amazing. This is the human I-R-G-Q-R-K, and this is the plant I-R-A-Q-R-K. They're almost identical. Right. The genes in your chromosomes and your cells would be the same as the genes you've been studying in these bean plants. Is that correct? Yes. Scientists argue that genetically modified foods are simply the most studied and tested foodstuffs known to man. There is no uh, example during agricultural history of plant varieties being tested so carefully as GM crops. These tests have been done since already more than 10 years ago. They have been tested in the field. They have been tested in terms of uh, their potential to harm human health. And it's unprecedented how carefully these plants have been tested to make sure that they don't cause problems to the environment or, or to human health. What's more, plant scientists argue that the new technology, far from damaging the environment, could be of enormous benefit. Ann Hirsch is working to develop plants which don't need fertilizer, which would be a huge help to both farmers and the environment. What we do in this country is we over-fertilize things. And so all this goes into lakes and riverways, winds up in a process called eutrophication, where you have an increase in algal growth. This reduces oxygen in these waterways, and all fish die. There are plants, the legumes, alfalfa and peas, that make their own fertilizer. Now, if we could understand the genes and find those genes and transfer that ability to other plants, like rice or corn or wheat, we would not have to rely on external fertilizer use. There's no way we could do this by traditional plant breeding. And according to Max Smith, another area in which the new technology has had a positive environmental impact is soil preservation, since farmers no longer have to till their lands. So Max, how is the new genetically engineered varieties of soybean allowed you to conserve the soil? Well, this field here is a prime example. If you look down here, Bob, see all this? Uh, organic matter we've got right here. You pick this up, this is a, a lot of this trash is from last year's crop. I see some soybeans in here. Yeah, this is a soybean crop that we're in, and, and here's the corn stalks from last year. There's a cob from last year's corn, and this technology's allowed us to leave this uh, residue on top of the ground, and this uh, keeps the erosion, keeps the water. Whenever we get, occasionally we'll get a two to three inch rainfall, and this soil used to erode and leave ditches down through it. It just carved a ditch right through it. And with all this trash on here today, it keeps that from happening. And uh, we're real proud of how we've uh, 
kept this soil right here where it needs to be. And you've been able to do this because of the genetically engineered varieties? That's, that's correct. 25 years ago, we had uh, as high as uh, 20 to 30 ton losses per year on an acre basis of losing soil. Uh, today, those soil losses are, are almost down to zero. I'm an environmentalist, and I think the thesis that, that new genetics and chemistry is bad for the environment is, is wrong. And we've uh, got to face the future with uh, seeing technical innovation as being a salvation to many of these problems uh, and not uh, a menace to the environment. Bob, I'm extremely optimistic about the new technologies that will be used in, in agriculture. There will be technologies that will essentially remove the need for agrochemicals. We'll have virus resistance, resistance to fungi, resistance to nematodes, resistance to insects, resistance to bacteria. We'll have a clean agriculture, an agriculture that will be what the natural foods industry dreams of, what the organic industry dreams of, and comes through good genetics. Plant scientists say we really should not be worried about this new method of genetically modifying plants. Yes, it's messing about with nature, but that's what we've been doing ever since agriculture began. We have been messing with nature for 10,000 years. The day we walked out of the caves, you know, from stop being hunters and gatherers, and we started practicing agriculture, we have been messing with nature. Kiwi fruit is about 50 years old. We talk about strawberries, it's just about 200 years old. Uh, orange fleshed carrots is about 300 years old. None of this existed 300 years ago. And these are all there because of our messing with nature. I think nature was responsible for producing green apples and red apples and red and yellow apples and yellow apples and green and red apples and orange and red apples and dark red apples and small apples and larger apples. Nature wasn't responsible for this. Man was responsible for selecting those variants in nature and preserving them and using them for these beautiful foods that we have inside the store today. Look at this plant. It has all these leaves on it. This is a relative of this plant. These plants look very, very different from each other, but yet they're exactly the same species, they're exactly the same family, they can cross with each other, they can pollinate each other, they're self-fertile with each other, and look at the enormous differences. Here we have all these leaves, here we have the flower heads essentially, and little tiny leaves. And so what man did which is remarkable, is use his ingenuity in order to engineer different parts of the plant. This is a monument, a cathedral, to human imagination and human ingenuity. Nature did not produce this abundance of food. It was done by man. And when people say that we shouldn't tamper with nature, look all around you. Wake up. We've done it. We're benefiting from it. And genetic engineering technology is an extension of what we've done. But despite the weight of scientific evidence and the widespread use of genetically modified crops, some researchers nevertheless find that their work in this area is being hindered. We have faced uh, major problems to do these experiments in the field because now uh, activists have influence the Mexican government to stop all these type of experiments. So we are developing plant varieties that are going to be useful for small farmers, and this uh, ecologist group have uh, created problems which are delaying our research already for more than two years. And it's not just research that is being affected. The most shocking thing to me is that this prejudice is already starting to affect emergency provision of food as I found out in India when I visited the aid organization CARE. CARE had been distributing GMOs passed for human consumption in the United States to disaster victims in India and was nearly closed down as a result. 